The title of my sermon is Resurrection and Ascension, and I preached this on Sunday, February the 24th, 2019, at Prospect Trinity and Asbury United Methodist Churches in Harrington, Delaware. My name is the Reverend Dr. Lawrence Jameson. This is the uh, last part of a worship series about the life of Jesus. I've truly enjoyed preaching about uh, the details of the life of Jesus. Today we're going to be talking about the resurrection, the ascension. So three days after Jesus died on the cross, he arose. And next, he appeared to his disciples over a period of 40 days. And then he went back to heaven. That's called the ascension. And 10 days after that, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost to empower his disciples to become effective witnesses. You know, Easter is just one in a series of important days to Christians. Easter was followed by the post-resurrection appearances. And the post-resurrection appearances were followed by the ascension. And the ascension was followed by the day of Pentecost. You know, there's a fullness to the Christian gospel. It has depth and breadth, richness and reach. And these events are personal treasures to us. They apply to our everyday lives. And they unfold as they are retold in your life and in my life. You have a Calvary. That's when you died to sin. You have an Easter. That's when you were born again. You have a post-resurrection appearance because that's when Jesus revealed himself to you. And you have an ascension. Well, you will have an ascension because that's when you and I will see God. And you have a Pentecost. That's when you get to let go and let God and feel his power in your life to make you effective as a witness. Everything about the life of Jesus applies to us personally. And everything about the life of Jesus will help you and make you a better person. You know, we don't learn these stories in order to be smart. We learn them because we desperately need God's grace. You know, these are the stories that frame our identity, and they give our lives context and meaning. So let's talk about the resurrection, the 40 days of, of appearances, and uh, the ascension. Well, first, the resurrection. Jesus predicted the resurrection four times in Matthew, three times in Mark, and three times in Luke. Now, did the, did the disciples believe it? No, not really. How could they possibly? It was an impossibility. And yet with God, all things are possible. You know, Jesus said those words in Matthew 19, 26. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. In John 20, verse 11, the Bible says, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Dear ones, Jesus is alive. The resurrection really happened. His resurrection was immediately personal. And you know what? I absolutely love it that the Bible explains that Mary did not recognize Jesus even when he was standing there in front of her until he spoke to her by name and called her Mary. You know, that is exactly what Jesus does for you and me. He calls us by name. And suddenly, the resurrection isn't just history. It becomes personal. You know, Jesus died for your sins, and he rose for your salvation. You know, Jesus loves you, not in a general, vague, or corporate way, but specifically, he loves you just the way you are with all of your faults and failures. He rose for each one of us personally, and because he did, we have hope. So let's talk about the post-resurrection appearances. You know, how do we know 
it was for a period of 40 days. Well, the Bible plainly tells us so in Acts 1.3. And after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, uh, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God, end quote. So, is there a list of these appearances? Yes, here it is. There was the appearance to Mary Magdalene and the appearance to the women disciples, the appearance to Peter, the two disciples who were walking to Emmaus, uh, the apostles, all the apostles except for Thomas, and then all the apostles, especially Thomas, and then by the Sea of Galilee and on a mountain, and one time over 500 disciples all at once. You know, each of these appearances is marked by compassion and kindness, wonder and amazement, and every single one changed somebody's life forever. And dear ones, the moment you accepted Jesus into your heart, that was your post-resurrection appearance. That's when Jesus came to you personally. You know, Jesus is alive, and he's here in this room right now. You know, we may not see his body right now, but we will someday. You know, in Matthew 18, 20, Jesus said, Where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. And in 1 John 3, 2, the Bible says, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. So let's talk about the ascension. So what is the ascension? Well, that's when Jesus went back to heaven. You know, the Ascension and Christmas are very similar because the Ascension is basically Christmas reversed. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, at Christmas, Jesus left heaven and he humbled himself, leaving behind his glory and became a vulnerable, needy little baby. And at the Ascension, Jesus left the earth and returned to his glorious throne. The disciples actually saw this happen, and they wrote about it in the Bible. And there are many places in the Bible that uh, we read about the ascension. Let's just look at one uh, that's found in Acts chapter 1, verse 9. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee... Why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. End quote. So this means that someday you are going to ascend. And that is why Jesus came to earth. And that is why he died and rose again. And this story about Jesus is personal for you and me. And it applies to our lives. So we can ask the question, well, what will that ascension be like for us? Well, the Bible answers that question in 1 Thessalonians 4.16. And that's where the Bible says, For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Well, dear ones, this is the end of my worship series about the life of Jesus. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have uh, enjoyed talking about uh, all of these different components in this life of Jesus exercise. It's fun talking about Jesus. Perhaps the most important thing I've said, I've been able to tell you that everything about the life of Jesus applies personally to your life and to mine. Amen. Thanks for listening to my sermon.